everybody, all right? Amen. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Dear Jesus, Lord, we love you, God. We thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for your help to us. God, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for your goodness. God, we ask you, Lord God, that you would move in our life. God, that you would have your way in this service today. God, we ask you, Lord God, that you would move in such a mighty way, Lord God. God, we give you glory today, Lord. Touch the brave family. Be with them, Lord. God, be with them and give them strength and help today. God, we ask you, Lord God, that you touch Sister Tricia. God, give her strength in her body today, we pray, Lord. God, we ask you, oh God, that you would move for us now. And God, will worship you and praise you. God, bless the fathers in Bethel Chapel. Bless them this morning, Lord, and help them. And God, minister to them, and we'll give you glory and praise for it, Lord Jesus. God, we ask all this in your name, Lord God. And God, we'll give you the glory and we'll give you the praise. God, for your help to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Can you worship him this morning? Let's take a moment and give him praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you, Lord. We bless you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I praise you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless in our life, the way that you bless each and every family, Lord, and provide for our needs. God, I pray, Lord, that you bless Bethel Chapel, bless this church, Lord, and bless the ministries, Lord, the campground, the bus ministry, the school, the children's ministry. I pray, God, that you bless each and every one. And God, we ask you to meet every need, Lord. We'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ryan, come if you would. Lead us in worship today. Amen just going to give you a, a little preparation here, all right? Man, I'm after we worship today, and I want you to worship the Lord, but I've got, I'm going to come and I'm going to share something with you that is that I believe should make your heart rejoice. And I'm giving you warning, because if you don't rejoice like I'm going to rejoice, I'm going to be very disappointed. All right? So I want you to be, I want you to be ready for this. Amen. God is a, God is a great God. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Oh, thank you, 
Praise God. Let's turn to page 184 in the Red Book. Hallelujah. Praise God. Appreciate fathers. Appreciate my father. Uh, my dad always said, you know, my dad said a lot of things, but one of the things that he said most often was, he said, I'm going to do my best, and when I fall short, I'm going to pray that the Holy Ghost will make up the difference. That's right, Amen. Brother. And that's, that was his key. Amen. Yeah. So the, my, I hope it's mine as well. I hope it's yours. So let's sing He Abides this morning.
church 7 30 and on Wednesday night come out hey man also wanted to ask you to be praying Summer Davis she attends the school her grandma passed away and funeral on Wednesday so if you would remember Summer's family as well and be praying for them hey man, just wanted to just share this with you man we had a wonderful youth camp I mean just wonderful what God did in our young people and I I I almost would just say, hey, fathers, we'll catch up to you and we'll come back and bring them in here and let them testify. Because I'm telling you, the Lord did some wonderful things in our young people this week at youth camp. Just tremendous. Unbelievable. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that. The offering, I know many of you are that. Man, wow, praise the Lord for the offering, right? Unbelievable. God provided in, in a miraculous way. And all of that is wonderful. Yes. But I had, I received this the other day, and I want to share this with you. I mean, some of you may remember the Thursday night service, and uh, Brother Meadow preached on Jesus, give me Jesus, right? And I have, a, I believe that, it, that when you lift up the name of Jesus, when you lift up the name of Jesus, great things happen. Yes, it does. And we had a tremendous altar service that night there 
uh, on Thursday night as he preached about Jesus and lifting up the name of Jesus yeah. and, and glorifying Jesus. Amen. But I wanted to read this to you. And uh, um, it goes like this. But God, what a wild weekend for our girl, Peyton. If you have seen Peyton, you see how she is hunched over and one shoulder higher than the other, also one hip higher than the other. She is diagnosed with scoliosis a few years ago. We've tried braces to straighten her posture, but uh, these only caused her more pain and discomfort. We've taken her to the doctor and was told she would need surgery, which would have her laid up for months recovering. This week, she went to youth camp. And on the last night, which was the last night, there was an altar call given, and it was for physical healing in your body. You remember that, those yeah. of you that were there? She said, Mom, there was, and this is a quote, she said, Mom, there was over 900 people there. So I was not going to go forward, but something like a bolt just shot through me, and I just started walking to the altar. The preacher asked me what I needed prayer for, and he had me say it in the microphone. Many, do you remember that young girl that said scoliosis? Do you remember that? And she, he, I said it in the microphone. Then the man behind me said, you stepped out in faith, and God's going to heal you. She said, the next thing I know, I was slain in the spirit. When I got up, my shoulders were straight, my hips were even. I'm standing straight. God healed me. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord praise with me tonight, today, church? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for healing, Lord God. God, we thank you for the power of healing in the name of Jesus. God, there is healing in your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, God. I'll give you glory today, Lord. God, I praise you, Lord Jesus. God, for you're worthy of all glory. You're a healer, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Her dad said, talk about tears. I see it with my eyes, and it's just wow. He is so faithful. The faith, the size of a mustard seed, still produces miracle. He says, healed girl, thankful mom, and trust me, dad will preach this Sunday. He's so filled up. God is a healer, and there's nothing too hard for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I thank you, Lord. Praise God. I pray, Lord, I've prayed, God, we need, our generation needs to see miracles. They need to see that God is a healing God and that he does miracles. Amen. And I wanted to share that with you because many of us heard her speak that into a microphone. Amen. But we don't know whatever came out of it. You know what I mean? There's just so many kids there. But now we know, amen, that God did a miracle. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more time. Give the Lord praise if you would. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want, I'm rejoicing in that. I'm just so excited about that. Amen. That, that what God did and while everything else is great, man, I'll tell you what, it just sometimes with things like that just just really thrill me, amen, that, that we see a miracle. And you, um, amen. I know that uh, her parents, when she probably got off that church van, they probably were pretty excited, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I tell you what, if you don't get, if you uh, see any of the young people, just ask them, what did the Lord do for you this youth camp? What did God do for you at youth camp? 
and uh, you may just, uh, they, you'll be surprised and amazed at what great things the Lord did for our young people at youth camp. Oh, Amen. Praise, praise God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. So glad to have each and every one of our fathers with us today for Father's Day. And we appreciate you. We love you very much. Amen. Brother Gabe, do you still have that ability? You on, you on it already, aren't you? All right. Thank you, Brother Gabe. And uh, we're going to give out a few gifts here, and then we'll have some gifts for every all the fathers as you leave today in the foyer. Please grab a Father's Day gift as you leave. But got a few special gifts that we want to give out today. And um, so we'll, we'll go by birthdays today, Brother Gabe, if you give me the month, and then we'll go by the day, all right? Go ahead. October, that's not, yeah. <laughs> Who's got a birthday in October? Brother Larry, stand up. If you have a birthday in October, stand up. Who's closer to the second? Who's on the second? Brother Don Miller is on the second. All right, amen. Somebody bring Brandon, what's your Amen. It's good to see Brother Tom Holbert with us today. Yes, good to have yes. some of these brother guys back. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give me another month, brother. Yeah, March. That's a three, right? Okay. <laughs> March. You're already standing, Brother Brandon, Brother Jerry. Okay. Anybody else in March? Anybody else in March? All right. Amen. Brother Jerry, when was your birthday? The ninth? The seventh. What is it? 14th, that'd be Brother Jerry. <laughs> August, that's an eight, right? All right, August. <laughs> Stand up if you got a Oh, a lot of them in August. Oh, wow. Brother Josh, 17, 9, 19, 28, 19. Wow. Give all of our fathers a good hand if you would. Again, I appreciate them. Got some wonderful men in Bethel Chapel. And God's been so good to bless us with some uh, great men, amen, that love the Lord and, amen, serve God faithfully. Amen. If you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me today. We're going to look in the book of Ezekiel today. And I'm going to try to preach to you. As you can tell, my voice is really weak today. It's from uh, maybe a few days at youth camp, something like that possibly. Has something to do with it. And the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22. Ezekiel, chapter 22. And I'm going to read to you a, a few verses here, just briefly, and then we'll, we'll read our text to you, all right? Man, if you know, when you look at uh, chapter 22, there's a few things. First, you notice in verse 26, it talks about the priests have violated my law. Verse 27 says, her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves. Verse 28, her prophets have daubed with untempered mortar. Verse 29, the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. It talks about some pretty rough conditions right there that the people of Israel are in. They're in some difficult conditions around them. Verse 30 says, and I sought for a man among them that I should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. That is a very sad statement that is made there. It is sad because of the, of the price that is going to be paid. He said that they might, that I should not destroy it. Verse 31 says, therefore I have poured out my indignation upon them. There is something that could, a, a danger that could have been prevented. There is a disaster that could have been averted if there only would have been a man. Here we read there that, he, that there is a, he says, I sought for a man 
that should make up a hedge and stand in the gap. The word gap there speaks of a breach. What is what the picture here is that of that of a wall and that wall that is meant for protection, that wall that is meant for uh, to protect that city, there is a gap or a breach in that wall. There's an area of that wall that has been broken down. And because it is broken down, it allows the city to be vulnerable. Enemy come in through the breach. It creates an opening for things, for the wickedness that surrounds the city to enter in and to that city. And that's what he's describing here as he's talking about that there is a breach that needs to be filled to save the city from destruction. There's a gap that somebody needs to step up and stand in to protect the city from the destruction that is around it. I would like to take this verse if I could today and I'd like to draw it down to not a city but draw it down just to our family as well because I believe that our families, our homes, we are living in a world that is that has went into decline. We're living in a wicked hour. We're living in a, a very difficult time. There is great danger to our homes and our families. I believe that it's important that we recognize the danger that is around us. If we never recognize the danger, if we never recognize that there is, a, that there is an enemy to destroy us, there will never, we'll never feel the need to step up. We'll never feel the need to, to rise up and to fill in that gap. But if we could recognize today that there is a great danger that surrounds us today, there's a, there is dangers that are in the world. The, the culture that we live in today, hey amen, is not, is not a God-fearing world at all. It is not, we're not living in a, a God-fearing world. Matter of fact, I just read statistics just recently <clears throat> that those that believe in God has dropped to an all-time low since they've been polling. We are at an all-time low. It is around 80%. That now that actually believe there's a God, that, uh, that have any belief that there's a God, that there tells us, and it's, that, that is a, on a steep decline. We're living in a day where there is, there, it is an ungodly world. When I say ungodly, they do not feel like that there is a God that intervenes in their life. As a matter of fact, statistic that I read said that there is about 20% of the people that believe in God, that God actually, that believe that God actually intervenes in their life. That, 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 um, I found that to be amazing that that low of a number of people believe that God actually intervenes because I believe with all of my heart that God is very involved in my life on a daily basis, amen? And I believe that God is very mindful of me and aware of my life. But that ju it just shows the culture we're living in, the day we're living in. It is an ungodly world. It is a world where we have turned to uh, pleasing of the flesh and, and sinful actions and, and wickedness and danger and, and, and hatred and violence all around us. When we look at the world we're living in today, when we hear of, of, on a regular basis daily of of wicked things and, and killings and murderers and some of them in the most, the most horrible fashion that you can imagine. And it just, it, it is disturbing when you hear the news or read about these things. It is disturbing to us. It just should alarm us that there is a danger that we are living in this world. But it also should stress to us how important that the hedge is in our home, how, how necessary the hedge was in our life. You see, many times when we think about a hedge, we, don't, we do not even consider it. We don't even think about it. You don't wake up in the morning and say, boy, I hope there's a hedge about me. We don't ever think about that. But when I think of Job, I think of Job, and the Bible says that Satan said, you put a hedge about him. 
even though Job, I don't think Job realized there was a hedge, but Satan realized there was a hedge. And the enemy, his enemies were held at bay because while there was a hedge about Job, guess what? His children were safe. While there was a hedge about Job, his belongings, his possessions were safe. And while there was a hedge about Job, Job was safe. But it was in that moment that God allowed that hedge to be brought down to test Job. Hey Amen. That the enemy came in, that his children, that he lost his children, that Satan had advantage over him. So we need to realize how important a hedge is in our life. Why you don't wake up in the morning and look out and see it. Hey Amen. You ought to thank God that God... Amen, has put that hedge about your family. Amen, while you may not realize it's there. Amen, and you may say, you may not even feel like, does it even do anything? I want you to know, you don't even realize how great of a protection the hedge is in your life. Hallelujah. We don't realize how safe we are until our safety is challenged. We don't appreciate the safety of our home until that, that area is violated. And then suddenly we realize how important the set, that safety is. You don't realize how important it is until one day you come home and your home is ransacked. And then you feel, you feel that. You feel unsafe and that, that is disturbing. That is disturbing. And I, I want you to realize the, the hedge that God puts around us. We may not realize how important it is, but I can tell you if, it, if God ever allows, hey amen, for something to come in, hey amen, we need to be aware, right? Because it is a very scary thing. That hedge is important. But when we read this also, we read that there's a, this hedge has a breach about it. There is a, there is a gap in this hedge. There is a gap that is there. And the Lord, the, the, we realize there's a danger now because the hedge has been broken. We realize now there's a vulnerability because of the hedge being broken. There's a vulnerability in our home when the hedge is broken. There's a, there's a, uh, there's our children are vulnerable when there's a hedge that is broken. Our marriages are vulnerable when there's a hedge that is broken. Our family is at stake. We have, we have much at risk when there is a gap or a breach in the hedge, when that hedge has been broken, when there's an opening. If you realize that at your house there is a weak point in your house where a thief might break in, most of us will go to some length to secure that in some way. Most of us have locks on our doors and, and we, have, we make sure that things are secure before we go to bed at night. Why? Because we want to make sure there is no opening. There is no way for any evil to come in on us and to come in. But what about spiritually? What about spiritually? Are we as cautious? Are we as careful? Amen. That we do not, that we do not leave an opening in our life where Satan can come in. Amen. Here we read, the Bible says, the Lord says, I sought for a man. I sought for a man among them. God is looking for men today. Tell you, it's good. Uh, I, want to be, I want to be careful this morning, but man, I'll tell you, sometimes it's really getting hard to find a man. It's somebody that, that can take, that can fill in and stand in a gap. Now he noticed, he said, I was looking for a coward. No, he's looking for a man. He's looking for somebody that has, that has courage. Somebody that has backbone. Somebody that will take, notice this. Notice the posture of this man. He's not a man that's kneeling. He's not a man that's, that's crawling. He's not a man that's whimpering. But he's a man that will stand. A man that will stand. Amen. I appreciate godly men that are willing to stand for something. Amen. Who are courageous and are willing to take a stand. 
And we're living in a day where there's a lot of people that, that go, they, they're carried away with every little wind that comes along, with every new thing or every idea that comes along, they get carried away with it. Hey Amen. But where are the men that are able and are willing to take a stand? Hey Amen. God's looking for men today. Hey Amen. That are men of courage. Men that are courageous. Men that are willing to make a stand today. Men that are willing, hey amen, to stand against the winds of this world and the winds of culture that blow against them. Where are men that are willing, hey amen, that to take a stand and to, for what they believe and are willing to stand up for what they believe in? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hey amen. Uh, I hope you're with me today, amen, because we need some men that are willing to stand. Hallelujah. There's a lot of men that they, they want to fill the gap, but they don't stand for anything. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna fill the gap, you're gonna have to take a stand against some things. You're gonna have to stand against sin in this world. If you want to protect your family, you're going to have to stand up against, amen, the culture of this day. You're going to have to stand on the word of God. You're going to have to stand on the scripture, and you need to know the word of God. And you need to take a stand on that. Amen, and stand courageously. Amen, and not be afraid. And do not back down. Why? Hey Amen. Your safety of your family depends on you taking a stand for right and righteousness. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. I appreciate men that are willing to stand on the word of God. Men that know what they believe. They know what they believe and they take a stand. One of the things that, that Ezekiel was referring to was that there was false heresies. There were those that were not true in the, what they believed. And we need men, amen, that are willing to stand for the truth of God's word. Amen, that know the word of God and will be able to stand against every evil doctrine, every false teaching that would rise up in this day that we're living in, amen, and stand against it. Where are the men that will stand? That's what the Lord is looking for. The Lord's not saying, I couldn't find a man. No, he didn't say, I can't, couldn't find a man because I believe there were plenty of men. Amen? No pun intended there with amen, all right? There was, he, was, he was looking for a man, but there was plenty of men, but he wanted a man that would stand. A man that could fill in the gap. A man that would stand in the hedge. That's where the problem was. A man that had the qualities and the qualifications. A man that he was willing to make that stand. There's plenty of, there's men all around. Amen. But there's not some men that won't stand up and be the father of their children. Take a stand. Be the father. Be the man, amen. Be a father to your children. Teach them, instruct them, protect them, provide for them. Amen, be a man and take that stand as a father. Oh, Lord, help us. It concerns me. There are so many young people that don't really have a father figure in their life. We know this at Bethel Chapel. In our Sunday school classes on a Father's Day or Mother's Day, we have to tread softly because when we talk about honoring our father, there's some that say, I don't even know who my father is. There's some children that say, my father beats me, my father abuses me, my father mistreats, how can I honor a man that my father? And there's many that fall into that category today, unfortunately. Amen. But I want to preach to us today that we need to be the man that takes a stand and stands up as the father of our children, amen, and fulfill in the gap, amen, that we would be a father that one day they can honor, hallelujah. 
of one day they can point their finger at and say, that was a man of God in my life. That was a positive influence in my life. They molded me, they shaped me, they made me into what I needed to be because they was a father to me. Hey Amen, we have to have some fathers stand in the gap and make up this hedge. Yes. Man, we need some men to stand up as a husband. There's too many men that fall, they, they live in servitude to their own passions and their own lusts. And they do, they do not know what it is to be loyal, to be true, to be faithful, to be committed. Amen. Well, we're quiet this morning. Amen. Tell you what. Hallelujah. Amen. If you thought, if maybe, you know what, we, we, this is Father's Day, and maybe we thought we was going to come, and we was, get, we, we was expecting it to be, uh, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not here to give you, uh, to, to pat you on the back I, so much. I want, to, I want to urge us, amen, the necessity of the day. Yeah. Take a stand. Right. Amen. Be the husband. Hey Amen. Don't let your wife live in fear. Don't let your wife live insecure, wondering about your faithfulness or questioning where you're at or what's going on. Hey Amen. Be a man of God that takes a stand and have the courage to stand as a husband. Hey Amen. And be that man that will fill in the gap. Hey Amen. We need to teach our children what a godly husband is like. Amen. They need to see model before them how you treat a woman, how that you treat your wife, how you respect your wife, how you love your wife, how you cherish your wife. Amen. Be a man and stand in the gap. Be that example. Take a stand. I know there's men say, man, if I, if I act like, you know, show tenderness to my wife or to my children. Amen. It questions my manliness. No, it don't. Amen. And let me tell you what. It proves that you have the courage to stand up and be a man and show what real manliness is all about. Manliness is not being unfaithful to your wife. Manliness is not having all these kind of affairs and all this cheating outside of your marriage. That's not manliness. Manliness is when you can stand in the gap and say, I'm standing for my wife and for my family. That's manliness. That's standing. Hallelujah. And so it takes men, men to control themselves to have self-control in their life and that they keep their passions and lusts under subjection to them amen God help us to have men that will stand men that will stand in the gap hallelujah we need men they not only stand for their children and the, as a father, but they stand as a, as a husband. But we need men to stand, amen, as Christians in their home today. Yes. We need men that will stand up and say, my home is a Christian home. My home is a Christian home, and my home is going to be, be godly. Amen. I'm not, I'm, I want my house to be a house of faith. A house where the Lord God is honored. And I'm not, I don't want anything to come into my home that would destroy that. Take a stand. Take a stand. Amen. Be determined. Hey, man, then guess what? It don't matter. Hey, man, if the breach is at the Internet, hey, man, I'll take a stand against it. It's not coming into my house. I'm not going to let evil and pornography and all that junk come into my house through the internet. Amen. If that's where the breach is at, I'm going to take a stand against it because I don't want it in my home. Amen. If that stand is in, in the television and the videos and the movies and the video games, I'm going to take a stand. I'm not going to let it happen. I'm not let it going to come in. I'm going to block that breach. Amen. That is there. If it's happening on a cell phone or wherever it's at, I'm going to take a stand. Amen. And I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to make up a hedge. I'm not going to let this come in and destroy my home, my family, my marriage. I'm not going to let it destroy our Christian home. Take a stand. 
Amen. It's not going to happen through our relationships. Amen. It's not going to happen through friends. Amen. Take a stand. And I'm telling you what, we need, if there's ever a day, we need men, amen, to stand. To stand in the gap. Make up the hedge. We're living in, we're living in a difficult hour. Amen. I wish that we could realize what the cost is for no man, for there not to be a man to take that stand. He said, I saw for a man, I saw for a man that could make up the hedge, stand in the gap, but I found none. Man, what an indictment. What an indictment. But it was for the safety of them for the safety of, of their home, for the safety of their, of their families, that they, would, they should be able to uh, find that this man would take a stand. And when you read this, this verse, he said that I should not destroy it. There is, it is a destructive pattern that we have when there is not a man that takes a stand. If you had a godly father that was willing to take a stand in your home, you need to praise him today. You need to honor him today. Yeah. Listen, if you, have a, if you have a husband that you can faithfully trust in, right. a man that you, that you have confidence in, that stands for your marriage and your children, let me tell you, you need to, you need to honor them today. Because yeah. that's what we are looking for in this generation. Yeah. is men that will stand in a gap. Yeah. Amen. Make up the hedge. Right. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Hallelujah. I've said it a number of times already this morning that I appreciate the men of Bethel Chapel. I appreciate you men. I believe that God has blessed us with good men. But I do believe that even the good men need to hear a challenge to them every once yes, in a while. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's funny when you, I walk in the high school, these boys are coming into their, their manliness, you know. And they want to be, they want to show themselves as men. So if there's something that needs to be carried, something that needs to be lifted. If you challenge their manliness, boy, I'll tell you what, you'd be surprised how suddenly, how strong they can become. <laughs> right? They start figuring it out after a while, but while they're young, man, you can get a lot out of them that way. Just challenging their manliness. Challenging them. Oh, man. Anderson, when he was in high school, I always called him forklift. Forklift. I could get him to lift anything. And he could about lift anything, too, and he still can. Sometimes it's challenging. And today, I want to challenge you as men. It's not that I think you're failures and not that I think that you're not doing, but I want to challenge you. I want to test you. I want to push you. Amen, that you would square your shoulders. That you would plant your feet. And that you would stand strong for your family. Realizing the danger that surrounds us today. Amen, I want to challenge you men. Not that I think you're wimps or weak. Not at all. But if I could get you to stand stronger, I just want to challenge you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I'm I'm thank God for the goodness of the Lord because I've heard so many. I've heard fellow pastors tell me of disasters. Amen. But I want to challenge you today. Man, don't become, don't let your home become a disaster. But stay. Bow your heads with me today, if you would. Dear Jesus, God, I ask you, Lord God, today, 
uh, that you would speak to our men. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would put a challenge in their heart. God, that they would plant their feet, square their shoulders, lift their head. God, that they would be willing to take that stand for truth, righteousness. Stand on the word of God. Stand upon the truth of the word of God. And God, I pray, Lord God, let them rise up as fathers, as husbands, as Christians. And God, I pray, Lord God, let them take that stand. God, I ask it in your name and we'll give you glory for it. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, man, and you see the dangers that surround you and your home and your family, man, I want to encourage you today, give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus. Step up into the gap. Make up the hedge. Maybe you've said, Brother David, I've already failed. I've already made so many mistakes. I've already had so many failures. Hey, man, the Bible teaches us, hey, man, though we fall, that we don't have to stay on the ground, but that we can get back up again. Hey, man, that we can recover and that we can stand up into the gap and make up that hedge for your family. Hey, man, you say, but my children, they've seen things. Hey, man, stand in the gap. Show them what a true Christian man is. Begin today. Start right now. Say, but I've already failed my wife. She doubts me. Hey, man, stick a stand right now today. Hey, man, start anew. Start afresh. Hey, man, begin to rebuild that confidence. Rebuild that gap. Rebuild that breach. Rebuild that broken down area of your life. Hey, man, and you could only do that by taking a stand. Hey, man, as a godly man, as a Christian. Hey, man, prove yourself. Hey, man, as a man that's faithful and true in your home, hallelujah. Ask God to forgive you. Amen, call upon the Lord Jesus. Amen, say, God, I want to be a man of God. I want to be a Christian man. Hallelujah. Amen, the altar's open this morning. I want to invite you to come with me, men, women. Amen, if you want to come together as a family, however you feel led today. Amen, but I want you to come, and men. I want you to reach out to the Lord. God, help me, help me. Help me, Jesus.
just needs a few good men. Oh, I'll sing it out fast. And full of compassion, we'll laugh and love and cry. Men who'll face eternity. 